Hello everybody, my name is Holly. I'm a member of the Métis Nation of Alberta, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Métis beaded flower. Okay, so to start, you're going to need uh, your template. So I found this just by searching on the internet, a, a Métis beaded flower template. And I added a little dot to the center of the flower, so that can be our starting point for our beading. Next, you're going to need a piece of felt. Um, so this is a stiffened piece of felt, um, or you can use unstiffened. I find that the unstiffened is good to learn on, but it is a little bit easier to hold your pieces together on stiffened felt, so it's up to you what you would prefer to use. After that, we're going to need some uh, needles. So these are beading needles, size 10 slash 12, and we're going to need your bead needle. So this needle is a little bit longer. It's about that long. And this is the needle that you're going to use to pick up your beads to apply to your felt. Now after that, you're going to need some thread. So this thread is very, very small and it kind of almost feels like a wire. It's called microfused braided beading thread and it's 0.12 millimeters thick. So it's extremely small, um, but that's important because our needles are very small and our beads are very small. So make sure that you get small thread so that you can easily work with it. But this thread is also very strong it's almost kind of like a fishing line, actually. When you pull on it, it's not going to break. So just make sure that you get the right thread and the right size. The next thing that we're going to need are our actual beads. So for this project, I recommend getting three different colors of beads. Um, but of course, it's your project. You can get as many colors or you, as you want. Today I picked yellow beads, red beads, and black beads. I think that's going to be a really nice combination. And these beads are size 11 seed beads. Now when you're buying beads, I always recommend to look in the tube and make sure that the beads are pretty consistent in their size. Um, so you don't want any ones that are too small or too big. If they all look pretty uniform, then it should be a good quality bead to work with. For example, I bought these beads that were um, on sale and I just bought them without looking at them and now when I look at them I see all different sizes of beads and that really affected the way that my last project turned out so this is the last project that I completed with the beads that were cheaper um, and they were different sizes and unfortunately um, my eye is drawn to the different sizes of the beads and how inconsistent the sizes are um, so while it is still a beautiful project, I find that it's a little bit distracting from the final piece that some of the size beads are different. So that's something to keep your eye out for. You're also gonna need a, just a standard pair of scissors to cut your thread. I like to keep some needle nose pliers on me um, just cause sometimes I help, it helps pull the needle through the felt or it helps make knots in the thread that's so small. A pen with a thin tip on it. That'll make it so that you can get your design onto your felt easily. A little tray, this is just a plastic lid from a container that I put my beads in because these beads are so small when you pour them out they can just go everywhere. So I like to keep them contained in a little lid. And then this is going to be my backing piece. So this is a piece of animal hide. I believe it's a deer or a moose that my dad had hunted. Um, and this is what I'm going to use for my backing, but you can use anything. So you could use jean, different type of leather, pleather, um, really anything that you like, velvet even. Um, and I just like to make sure that my template will fit on this leather. Now since this is an animal hide, I like to use as small of a piece as possible because I don't want to waste any of the material. Um, so this looks like a pretty decent sized piece of hide to act as a backing for my flower today. The last thing that you'll need is just a nice cup of tea and some time to enjoy doing your project. Let's get started on how to do it. 
Okay, so to get started, we're gonna wanna put our template onto our piece of felt. So I've already done that. And the way that you do that is you just put your template in behind your felt and you hold it up to a window or somewhere light and you can see the outline through it and you just use your marker and you trace over your outline to get it onto the felt. Um, now it doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's gonna see the outline once it's done. It's going to be covered in beads. So I'm going to be showing you today how to bead using only one needle. And um, a lot of people do this traditionally using two needles, one needle to bead, to put the beads on, and one needle to tack the beads down. But I find it um, quite difficult and intimidating to use two needles. Um, so that's why I'm going to be showing you the method on how to use only one needle. I found it easier, safer, less lost needles, less poked feet when you're walking around. So we're going to start, we're going to take our long needle and we're going to make sure that we've double knotted the end of the thread so that it doesn't have a way to come through the felt. So this is going to be the front side and this is going to be the back side, okay? And we're going to start by coming through the back side of it and you can see the center dot that we made. So we're going to come up through kind of the side of that center dot. You can kind of see it's a little bit off to the side, it's not exactly on it. So we're going to come out through the front and the doubled knot is working perfectly, it's stopping it. And this is how we're gonna start our beading. So we're gonna pick up one bead, and I'm gonna do a yellow center for mine, just cause I think that'll look nice. So I've got one bead now on there, and I'm gonna go back through, again, through the front, on the center spot. There we go. Now we have our center bead tacked down, and that's the way that we start. So now I'm gonna come up kind of next to where we just came back through, and I wanna be as close to that bead as possible so that there aren't a lot of gaps. So now we've come back through again so that our thread is through the front, and we're gonna start by making a little circle now around the center bead. So I'm gonna pick up probably about six beads. And I'm gonna see if that's enough beads to make our circle. So I've got six beads now on my needle. And I'm just gonna check and see if that'll make a circle. Mm, I think I'm gonna need another bead actually. Yeah, we're gonna do one more bead. So it's gonna be seven beads to make this first circle. There we go. And now I'm going to tack down close to where the circle began actually. So this is gonna be the end of our circle here. So we're gonna poke down through and I may have lost a bead, there's one on my hand. We're gonna see what happens. There we go. And now that's gonna be the, our next circle once we have it tacked down in place. You can see. Okay, so now to tack it down, we're gonna come back up pretty much right where we just went through. If it's focused, there we go. So we're gonna poke back kind of right next to where we just came through. And bam, we're right back up again. And I'm just gonna start pinning these down. So I'm gonna go over the thread of this first bead here. So I'm gonna loop over it and poke down so that when I pull tight, it holds the bead right where I want it. Now that bead is tacked down. Now we're gonna do the same thing. 
So we're gonna go right kind of close to where we just came up. And I'm gonna poke through over it and pull down and tack down that bead. And then I'm gonna poke through again. And you see how the tack beads don't move anywhere. And I'm gonna poke over it. And then you can kind of just direct your thread where you want it to go so that you make sure that you're getting every single bead. Now I prefer to tack down every bead because I like the way that it looks. It gives like a nice kind of secure look, I guess. But you can absolutely choose if you just want to do every second bead, you can do that. There we go. So a couple more beads until we finish this this ring. So this time I, I pulled the thread on over the through the outside of the loop instead of the inside. So now I just want to go in between those and make sure I tack down that bead. And then I'm gonna do the same. There's one more here. There we go. And I want to tack down this one. And this is my favorite part. I love it when it like just really like pulls, yeah. And makes a nice little circle of beads that's not going anywhere. That's really secure on there. And if your circle is a little wonky, you can poke back up. And you can kind of tunnel your needle the way through the beads. And I like to do this to kind of make it all, I guess, cinch together. Um, but it's not necessary. If you find that your circle looks good without it, um, then there's no need to do this. And um, it just uses up a little bit more thread, but I like to do it because it makes my circle's a little bit rounder, more concise and held together. And I'm probably just gonna go through this one. And then I'm happy with my little se second circle there. Now I'm gonna poke through here, just to really finish off and tighten up that circle. Look at how beautiful that is. I love it. And then I'm gonna start on another ring. So I'm gonna pop up through again, wherever, close to my second ring here. And we're gonna make another ring of beads. So now this is starting to get pretty big. So I'm gonna start working in groups so that um, I don't have too many beads that like I can't manage it. So I'm gonna work in groups I don't know, of six probably. Okay, I've got six beads now on my needle. Push them down. And I'm just gonna see exactly how, where I'm gonna poke back through. So it looks like their beads are gonna cover me to about here. So I'm gonna poke back through there. Ouch. Just get ready to get poked here, people. This project will poke you a couple times. That's okay, because you're gonna get a beautiful flower after it. And your hands are gonna get used to it, so we'll just suck it up here for the time being. Okay, there we go. So I've got my next circle started here. And I'm gonna start tacking these down again. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start working backwards. So this is where we started and this is where we ended. But we're gonna start tacking backwards between each one. So I'm gonna start poking up between each bead again. This is how we're gonna just continue onwards. So I'm gonna start by tacking down this one. 
And again, I'm doing every single bead, but if you want to do every second bead, that's fine. As long as it looks good and it's secure, that's really all that matters. And traditionally, it's done, you know, flowers. Flowers are the most common design in Métis beadwork. Um, but you can really bead anything that you want. It's totally up to you. There are really no rules in art. Um, so if you have an idea and you think it would look cool, done with beading, then you can absolutely do that. Okay, so now the six beads that I just tacked down um, are done. So what I'm gonna do, now that I'm back to the beginning, is I'm gonna poke up through where we started on this circle. So I'm gonna poke up right, right there. And then I'm gonna go through so that I get back to the end of the beads that we just put on. And then I'll be ready to add more beads to my next ring. There we go. Now I'm ready to add some more. So I'm gonna add another six beads. So I've got six beads on my needle. I'm gonna put those down. And let's see where this brings me now. So it brings me pretty close. I've almost completed another full circle, but not quite. It looks like it's gonna get me right about there. So I'm gonna poke in there. There we go. And then I'm gonna tack that down with my one needle. Now, if you were doing this the traditional way with two needles, then you wouldn't do anything right now with this needle. You'd use your second needle to go back through between each space and tack down each individual bead. Um, but I find that it works just fine doing it with one needle and it's just more comfortable for me. And one more to tack down here on this set. And this is the part that I love that kind of brings the two pieces I guess the two different sets of beads together is this last kind of tacking there. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is because I want this to all look like one individual line of beads, whereas right now there's kind of a visible starting point, I'm gonna go back a couple of beads and make my circle through them. So I'm gonna poke a couple of beads before. There we go. And I'm gonna start going through these beads and then make it like a continuous line. There we go, we're almost completed our next circle. So it looks like I'm gonna have room for maybe another three beads and then, and then this circle will be done. And that was the perfect amount I needed to complete my circle. As you can see there, these three beads We'll close the gap that's left. So I'm going to poke down right next to where I started my beads. There we go. You see that? That looks so nice. And then I'm going to go through and tack down each individual bead. There we are. Now, always remember, if you come in on the inside of a bead like I have here, if it's gonna focus, there. So you can see my thread is here in between two beads, and I wanna tack down here. So I'm gonna put my thread over, poke through, and pull so that it creates a loop over those beads and holds them down. And I've got one more here to do. There we go. And holds it down. That's our ring. And then we're gonna just keep going with this. I'm gonna do 
maybe you know one or two more rows of yellow and then I'm gonna do this outline in black and then once we get there I'll show you some more instruction on how to do the petals you know sometimes the needle would rather just poke through your hand than poke through the thread or the felt and that's okay if you're nice to it eventually it'll cooperate with you or you just get a stubborn piece of felt and that's also fine this is why though when you're a beginner it might be easier to start with unstiffened felt even if your project doesn't hold it together as well it's a little bit easier to to stitch through and you don't have to stab yourself in the hands to make it work so I accidentally skipped a bead there so I'm just gonna go back and tack that bead down because I can see it standing out and this is coming along really nicely so I'm gonna stitch this onto um, a lanyard that I have but you can really do anything with this. So you could make earrings or a hair tie. You can use this for anything. And I'm getting to the point where I'm not able to tie or poke through with this. So the, the needle is just about as long as the thread is now. So what I'm going to do is I take the end of my thread and I need to, you need to be on the back side. So make sure that you're finished on the front and you're gonna go to the back. And this is where my needle head pliers come in because I have a hard time tying this thread because it's so small. But you're just gonna make, I usually double or triple knot it as tight as I can because I don't wanna lose all of that hard work that we just put in. Since the beginning, this was one continuous piece of thread. So if this thread is lost or cut or, or loosened, then all of the work we just did is, is gone to waste. So I really like to tie it down tightly with a triple knot. And I'm gonna make sure that the knot is thick enough it's not gonna come through the felt. So you can see I've got a pretty good triple knot there. That's certainly not gonna come through the felt. And I'm gonna go back in with my new piece and I'm gonna tack down these last beads that I wasn't able to tack down. But I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna make one more knot just to be fully 100% sure that this is not gonna go anywhere. And see this is, this is why the pliers come into handy. Even with the pliers, this is kind of tough to tie for me. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that knot. I'm pretty sure that's quite secure. That's not gonna go anywhere. The beads are very secure on there. So I'm just gonna cut the excess thread. And I'm not gonna cut it too close to, to the knot we just made. I'm gonna give it a couple millimeters. There we go. And this is how much thread that we wasted on that first knot. So not bad, not too bad. Just about the same size as the needle actually. So it did get to the point where I was no longer able to stitch with it. And I have another piece that's ready for me to continue with. So this piece has already been tied in a double knot on the end. And I'm just going to thread this new piece into my needle. There we go. I'm now re-threaded onto my needle, but I didn't finish tacking down these beads. So I'm gonna pop back up pretty much right where we left off. So right here, that's perfect. And we go in through the back so that we're at the front. And we are right where we left off so we can continue tacking down and pretend like we never had to change our thread. That's it. There we have it. That is so pretty. Ah. 
This is my favorite part of the projects is when things start to kind of come together. So I'm done with my yellow now for this entire project. So my next step, I'm going to make a little black ring around the center so that we have some definition of where the center is. Um, and then we're going to start on the petals, which is going to be awesome. So I'm going to now struggle to put the beads back, which is why I only like to do a few beads at a time because, girl, like, these beads are impossible. Woohoo! Okay. So I'm going to start by pouring out my black. And I'm just going to do a few because I'm only starting with the black rim. And then I'm going to move on to red. So I'm going to poke down here just to finish off the yellow. And poke down into the middle. That is so nice. And then I'm going to poke up just right outside of where we just finished off. And I'm going to do a black ring around here. So now that I've finished the center of my flower, now I'm going to start on all of the petals. So continuing going around the same way that I have been doing, I'm going to do a black outline along each and every petal, and then I'll be filling in the petal with red beads. Okay, so this is where we are right now. The last part um, of this project, while beading, is to fill in the petals with beads. So I'm going to fill in the petals with my red beads, and then once I've done that, I'll come back to show you how to apply your backing. Okay, so I just finished beading. This is the final product. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I was planning on just, you know, stitching it all to be red, um, but I just had an idea come to me that I'd put a couple little yellow accents in on um, a few of the petals. So this is going to be the top petal and I decided to put yellow accents on the bottom petals as well. So now my next step is I need to trim off the excess felt so that you don't see all of this stuff here. Um, and you just want to look at the back and be very careful of where you're cutting because you don't want to cut over where one of your stitch lines were. Um, because then your work is going to come unraveled. So just be very cautious when you're uh, trimming that you don't cut any of your thread. So I'm just going to go trim this off and I'll be back to show you how to put on our hide backing. Okay, so now I've removed all of the excess felt from around the sides of my flower. As you can still see, there is a little bit of white showing, but that's going to be mainly fixed once we apply our backing. Um, so now I'm just going to take a little bit of school glue. This is just a, any regular washable school glue. And I'm just going to apply a little bit right into the center of my flower. And it doesn't take a lot, and I'm just going to spread it around a little bit. This is to keep down, you know, any pieces of thread. I'm going to need a little bit more than that. And then this will also help um, us keep our backing on for a second while we're stitching it. There we go. Now that the glue is on, I'm going to take our backing and I'm going to firmly apply my flower onto the backing. And I'm just going to hold it here for a couple of minutes just so that it can dry a little bit before I release it. And then I'll be right back to show you what, what else we're going to do, what we're going to do next. Okay, so a couple minutes have passed and my flower is pretty well stuck on to the hide. Um, but we are going to stitch it together as well as add some beads along the trim so that it kind of closes up that trim. So our first step is just to trim around and remove the excess hide. Um, and then I'll be back on showing you how to apply the trim. Okay, so I have my hide trimmed down pretty well to the shape of my flower. And I'm going to do around the border here with some black beads just to kind of remove the layers that you're seeing here and stitch them together. So how we're going to do that, I'm going to pour some of my beads out into my holder. And I would like to start kind of at the top of my flower. And this is where you might, you know, need your pliers to come in handy. As you're going to be starting 
through the back of the hide and come up through that first layer of bead. And if you know anything about hide, you know that it's very, very stiff and a little bit tricky. There we go. Okay. So you can see my needle has pushed through and I've pushed through the first layer of beads. So I've got a layer of beads there and I'm going to use my pliers to pull the rest away through as it's a little bit difficult. There we go. Now I'm going to apply a couple beads, maybe, maybe two beads and I'm going to kind of just pull it over so you can see how that's going to look. And that's going to look exactly how I want it to. So now I'm going to push into the hide again. I'm just trying not to break my needle. There we go. Right next to the first, the first push we made. There we go. And this time we've put our beads onto it. You see there? And then I'm just going to continue to apply two beads all the way around just by poking through the hide and then around in the top. So I'll do another one here just to show you. And you want to make sure that you just tell your beads where you want them to go. There we are. So I'm going to continue on doing that until the flower is done. And then that's the, that'll be the final product. So this is the last step that you need to do to stitch your hide together and add the, the siding on. Okay, so I've gone around and done almost all of the backing. I only have one tiny little spot in there that I am going to, that's my last one, I'm gonna finish up with that. So you can see how it looks around, and there it is from the front and the back. And I'm just gonna show you how to finish this off. So basically, you just wanna make sure that it's finished off and sturdy. So I'm just gonna quickly finish my last spot here. And I broke pretty much every single needle that I own <laughs> when I was doing this, but that's okay. And that's the last piece of backing that needed to go on. So now I'm going to just do a couple of pokes through the front, going through the back and then vice versa, going from the back through the front. And then one last poke through the front to the back where I'm then going to tie it off. And that'll be our finished product. There we go. Okay, that's it. So this is the finished product. So this is the top petal of my flower here and there's the back piece of it it feels so nice and sturdy um, it's quite thick and you can do anything with this but for mine I'm going to be stitching it onto a lanyard that I have so I'm going to be putting it just on like that just to kind of give it a little bit of my own taste and flavor Now, I hope that you liked this video. Um, if you decided to make your own flower after watching this, I'd really love to see your project. You can tag me on Instagram at Projects by Holly. And if you enjoyed this video, I do have a couple other tutorials, um, one on how to make a dream catcher and one on how to make a pine needle basket. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you watch those other ones and I'll see you in my next video.